Okay, hi, um, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to talk about something everybody might have a problem with, which is how can your image stand out from this social media world? Well, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have the same problem that I am having is that there's so many images out there. How can yours stand out? Well, one of the approach I do is, to me, is the easiest way is through post processing. I would love to create an image that does not look like a straight upward camera or something that even though they own a camera, they have a flash, they still don't know how to create that look. Through post-processing, we could do a lot. So for example, for this image, um, I pretty shot it with ambient light, okay? Not, not so fancy. I mean, the lighting cell is right there. It's quite cinematic. By itself, it's good enough. But when it complete with the outside image, I call it, is it enough? Well, to me, I like to play around with it. So today, let me show you what I can do in Photoshop to make this image look even more stand out. All right. So today, we will use this next image. Um, first, what I'm going to do is open a curve adjustment layer. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to raise this up here. This is a black point. I'm probably going to put it up to around like about sixty. Uh, 62-ish, yeah, that sounds about right. And I'm going to go into wet channel. Now, one thing that when you play with the channels, color channels in the curve is that make sure you lock the centers, okay? Now, look what happens if I don't lock it. You go really haywire because, you know, if you pull down, which is we move red, you got green. And you increase too much, that's over. So the best thing to do is we lock it. If I just want to, right now, most of the time you want to adjust only at the shallow area. Okay, so you lock this, and now I'm gonna put a point here too. I'm gonna drag it down. See, you see how that is? And it's only that little bit. Uh, I don't want it too much. Just attack. Maybe that's good enough. I'm gonna go around maybe 61 to you know, 61 and. I want to put it down all the way to 1967, 19, something like that. I want some green in there. Okay, you see how when I lock that in the center, it doesn't really affect the skin tone that much. All right, let's now go to the green. Same thing, lock the green in the center, pull down. In this case, I'm going to add some red. And uh, that sounds about right. I'm good blue. Blue, in my own terms, I call it a normalizer. Why is that? Well, let me show you. If I pull this now, you see how it becomes a little bit normalized? I think that's good enough. Right there. So, go back. The number I had here on this point, it's around 61 output. Red. I lock it in the center here, and for this point, I kind of set it at 63 input and 27 output. Green, same thing, lock it in the middle, and this point is around 63 input and 38 output. And blue, again, lock it in the middle, and set it at 65 input and 48 output. And I will get this look. This is the before and after. It looks a little faded, right? It is. So we're not done yet, okay? I want to get that um, kind of vintage faded look first, okay? This is kind of there, a little bit over it, but don't worry because you see how this, uh, oh, I could change this op opacity here and it could look the way you want it, but I'm gonna leave it here for now. The next one I'm gonna do, it is called Selective Color, which is this here, okay? Now, first thing first, I'm gonna go to my now, the cool thing about selective color is you can control all this different color channel and within it, you can control the black, yellow, magenta, and cyan within that color. For this, for this instance, it's black. So, um, I have a mindset how I wanted it. So, I'm going to add back some little black in there. I'm going to add it to maybe 11 here. As there's some solid, so the black comes back. Um, I go into add 
a little bit yellow too. And maybe minus it was just a little bit here on the magenta. Cyan. Okay, I like that. Let's add around six. So the number I get here in black is plus twelve on black, plus seven on yellow, minus one on magenta, and plus six on cyan. Okay, see I got a little bit of contrast back, right? Well, not done yet. Um there's 10 and some red in there, so I'm going to play with it a little bit. Uh, 10 has a little red on the skin, so I'm going to minus. Uh, minus 4, 5, let's minus 5 on that. Uh, that's what happened if I add Oh, I like it when, when I add yellow back in there. I like it. It looks more vintage, so I'm going to add around 30. That looks pretty good. Magenta, I'm going to leave it. I don't, there's not one to play with. Cyan, no. Okay, um, there's a lot of white in this picture too. Let's play with the white. See, like I said, you could play with the color within the image like you want. So for white, let's see what happened if I add. Okay, because I want to look vintage, right? So I'm going to add black in there. See how it turns. You see how some of it will overexpose? It kind of got back into well exposure. I'm going to add around a little bit more than that. Around 43. Okay. And then yellow. Uh, let's subtract some yellows. Let's do. I want some white, but I don't want too much yellow on there. Let's do around 54 ish. Okay. Not going to mess with magenta. Not going to mess with. Cyan. I'm gonna go to yellow channel. Yellow channel. Let's see what I could do with it. Oh, I like that when I add that. But that's too much. Maybe 27. And how about add some yellow in there? Oh, I like that too. Let's add around. Not too much. Around 15 ish. Again, there's not much magenta and cyan there so i'm gonna leave that all right so after that so i got back some contrast but not losing the faded and yet vintage look look what happened this is before this is applied curve got a faded look apply selective color controlling the black the red the white and the yellow and i got this look all right Okay, still, it is a little bit different than the original image, you know, but there, I think we need more. So I have this, not this one, sorry, this texture, which I'm going to apply onto it. Okay. One thing to do is you pull that image into as a layer, right? And you do a transform. It doesn't matter. It has to be fit perfectly because I don't want that much. The dark, dark area down there anyway, so I'm gonna pull that out. I don't need that. That looks. Uh, I flip it this way. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna change the blending mode into say soft light. I like that. You see how that that turns? Now here's the problem. This is one of the tricks that I'm gonna show you about texture. Okay, you see how when you apply textures. I like the texture on the back, but most of the time I do portraits, I don't like those textures in my skin tone. Now, one can say that I could add a mask, right, and then get a brush in black, right, and brush it out. Let's see how that looks out, okay? Let me increase the brush a little bit more. Don't really like it that much, dude. Oops. It looks kind of weird when you do that, right? Oops. No. Let me show you a better way to do this. Delete that first. Okay. Change back to normal first. All right. Zoom in. This is what I'm going to do. 
I want to convert this texture into a smart object. All right. Now you see how there's a little sign here. It said this layer here is a smart object, smart object thumbnail. I'm going to do one thing to this layer. I'm going to blur, Gaussian blur. I am going to blur until I don't see the texture except for the colors. Around 12.5 is good. Okay. It looks blurry. Now I lost all the texture, but don't worry. If you click back on this mark filters, I hit command I. Oh, I just hide the blur effect. Now, go back to blending mode, soft light. This is what we're going to do, work on. Okay. Make sure you're on the smart filters. Got a brush on. Brush. Oops. It would be nice if I change the white first. See how the white there? Foreground color is white. Oh, it would be nice if I have it 100% and a little bit more fold. Maybe around 19. And it will work faster. Okay. I'll show you after I brush out all the skin. It doesn't have to be perfect. See, I don't like those. Make sure the skin tone has no no those textures. No, maybe the hair too. Okay, blow a little bit. I'm gonna do a 50% brush. Yeah, 45, 50. Get a big brush. Okay, this one do. Do a little. In there. Okay, good. Okay, this I'm gonna show you. Texture, no texture. Without the blur, you see? I blur out that so that what happened is only the texture color will apply onto the tech um, the image, not the textures. So this is the good way to apply texture, okay? Well, in a way it's probably a little bit too much. So I'm gonna minus that to run that so I get that look, right? That looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, you know, because when we after we apply the texture, I seem like adding a little bit more yellow, and the skin tone tend to be yellow. So I need to bright up the skin tone a little bit. So I'm gonna use a gradient map adjustment layers. Um, I'm gonna use this brownish one. Okay. And I'm changing the blending mode to which one's good? Soft light. That's that. You know what? I think I need more black in there. Let's put it a bit there. That see, much better, much much better. Okay, you see how after I apply this gradient map. The skin tone got a little bit brighter, right? It still tend to be in the yellow side, so I want to do one more thing. I'm going to follow filters. I am choosing cyan color. All right, 25 is good enough. I am going to block this mask and using a right brush and just right on her skin. And his too. Okay, but not. I'm gonna feather it out like that. Like that. That's the mask I'm having, just on the skin tone. But I don't need too much. Like Fifty percent is good. Thirty percent here is good. You see how the skin tone got a little bit more cool and it's separate from the background. That's exactly what I want. Okay, I think let's look at the before and after that. You know, the whole ambient light is surrounded her and the whole background. After this, the background and the subjects, which is this Elvis and Marimo, is basically pop out. Okay. Uh, but there's still kind of much of like empty and negative space area here. I could add a vignette and kind of focus back down onto the subject. But let's try something else. Let's try not this. Let's try add this texture to make it more like a vintage look, shall we? Okay. How's that? 
Okay, I'm gonna change this. Oh, why is it down there? Change the number two. Do multiple. Uh, no, not cover multiple like that. And I'm gonna change the capacity to that. I'm gonna flip it down upside down. There you go. You see how I had a little vignette at the corner, right? But I don't want that cover the subject. So what I'm gonna do is create a mask, get a gradient tools, get a circular gradient, right? And I need a black mask. So this I'm gonna do. See how it has a spotlight effect on her? See that? It also clear up some of those texture dark there, right? Because the mask is covered up. And voila. Now if you want at the last of it, you can always go back to a level and play around with the black point and white point to readjust exposure because we did so much to the image. Okay, we get a little solid. Whoa, that's I think that's what I'm looking for. This is the vintage Hollywood look that I'm going for. So this is the before image. We apply curve to get a faded effect. Apply select the color to control each color separately. Apply the textures. Clear up the skin tone a little bit, brighten it up. Also play with the color balance of the skin tone by adding a cyan color onto just the skins and apply texture to act as a yet and a little bit more control on the level to play with the exposure and this and this I'm pretty sure the final image will stand out much more because there's no way a camera can get straight out image like this especially with the textures and the layers of the colors that we place with all right I hope you like this tutorial thank you again I'm Jeremy bye bye